Hallelujah, praise the Lord. You ain't down with God, get out my way. Come to our church, you will see true love. If you follow Jesus, then you denied yourself. At the end of the day, Jesus always forgets. Therefore, anybody can love anybody. Okay, would you like to see what Jesus said? I, I can show you what Jesus said. I follow Jesus, I'm not tired. I can show you what Jesus said. He said, if anyone. I can fucking show him you. I okay, okay, right okay. Fucking up there with so Jesus said, 834, Mark 834. If anyone wants to follow me, you said you follow Jesus. If anyone wants to follow me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow after me. If you claim to be a Christian, then you must, according to the words of Jesus, have denied yourself. Have you denied yourself? Just, I mean, just because I did. At the end of the day, Jesus always forgives your sins. Question, buddy. Can I please throw a microphone for a second? Just because you have a microphone, you're asking someone and you're not giving her the microphone? I don't think that's how that would be. It's just, at the end of the day, Jesus forgives all your sins. Anybody is allowed to love anybody because at the end of the day, he's going to love every single one of these people. Okay, 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 okay. So you said that Jesus forgives everyone. Who does Jesus forgive? Does he just forgive everyone? He forgives anybody that asks for forgiveness. That asks for forgiveness. So you believe in the Bible, I assume? I believe in some parts of the Bible. Some parts are literally shit. There is a part in the Bible which says, whoever confesses and forsakes his sin shall find mercy. So there's two. But it's still at the end of the day, he will forgive you no matter who you love. Okay, so this is the argument. This is the argument here. So this is the argument. It's that you will find forgiveness if you confess your sin. We are Christians and we believe the Bible. What the Bible says, whoever confesses and forsakes their sin shall find mercy. If you're confessing your sin and you're getting up and doing the same thing, you're a hypocrite, you're not a follower, you're not going to find forgiveness. No. I'll hold the mic. I'll hold it. Okay, so I believe in Christianity, but the grounds and basis of the Bible is that it is to be considered in a literal text not a literal text. It's supposed to be considered in the medical, forical, metaphorical fables that you are supposed to learn your lessons from. Also, the only negative thing it says in the Bible about homophobia and gayness is translated wrong. It says, man should not lie with child. However, if you want to fascinate yourself in the disbelief that man should not lie with man, go ahead, but that's just suppressed homosexuality within yourself. Don't be insecure in your masculinity, man. Don't worry. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry, man. Don't worry. Okay, so he said two things. Okay, so this this is the culture. They want to say their point, and they don't want to have an argument. She said what she had to say. She didn't let me respond, and she left. Okay, so they don't want to have a conversation. Who wants to actually have a conversation? I was talking with her, and you came in. Let's finish the conversation with her first, okay? And then we can have conversations. And then we can have a conversation of what the Bible says. Number one, to answer your response, Jesus Christ literally took the Bible as real factual he said in the beginning God made the male and female and that's how it was Jesus believed that the Old Testament of the Bible was literal and real hold on let me have a conversation that we can talk after there's a couple people as, I, as well Leviticus chapter 18 talks about that Jesus quoted Leviticus when he said you shall love your neighbor as yourself in that same book written by the same author there is where the command goes against the sexual acts of homosexuality Jesus said love your neighbor as yourself he quoted it from a book that that also said that. Now to answer your question, yes. Now your now your question. Now your question. Yes, Jesus Christ forgives people of the sins, many sins. But Jesus does not forgive those who continually repeat their sin without repentance. Repentance means to turn. It means to change your mind. Literally, you cannot tell me that you've repented and you're continuing in this lifestyle that God tells you to change. Repentance means change. It means turn away to Jesus. You have the opportunity to repent. Everyone has the opportunity to repent. They can change. They can change. And that's what repentance is. I've changed. I was headed down a course that was wrong and sinful and I justified myself and said it was okay because I wasn't hurting other people. And 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 you know what? God gave me repentance and I changed my ways. I used to be like that. I used to commit sin and confess, say God forgive me and I would wake up and then go to the same sin over and over again. I would. I would. This is it. God bless you. And, and I'm telling you, I know it hurts. I don't know, maybe you believe the lie. But the truth is, is that, is that with Jesus, there is genuine change. The genuine repentance.
Quick question. You mind I step forward? Since she's not continue the conversation, can please take the turn? What would you like to say? Like you just mentioned about change, right? You mentioned about change. Question. Why Jesus cannot change? Answer the question. Why? Sorry, I didn't understand. Why Jesus cannot change? Answer why Jesus cannot change? Right. Because Jesus Christ is perfect. He has no need to change. You and I are sinful. Amen. We're all sin. Jesus is perfect. He has no need to change. You and I are sinful. We need change. Just keep preaching. Who wrote the scripture of the Bible? Who, who wrote it? Men, men of God. No, no, but how do you know that? Jesus is what do you mean, how do I know like, How do you know God wrote the Bible? Because the man deals with the Holy Spirit. Yes, we're, we're, we're here to testify. I know there's many that have controversy. We're here to preach the Bible. We're here to preach repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. That you can have forgiveness of your sins. That you can have a new life. A life that is good and righteous. And that's where we're here to proclaim to every man. Also, the Bible says that there's no other name given among men by which which we must be saved other than the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus is the only name that saves people. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. No one can come to God but by Jesus Christ. No one can come to God except through Jesus Christ. And that's what he said. That's what he said. So far, I want to ask one sentence and you are having a paragraph. Since you said it's a conversation, can we please let the conversation go? Let me have my second sentence. So you just mentioned Jesus is perfect, right? Yes. Then my next question is, how do you define perfect? I define perfect based on the moral standard of God. God's moral standard is perfection. There's no opportunity for any fault. God's standard is perfection. That is perfection. Perfection is Jesus is God's moral standard. Jesus lives up to God's moral standard of perfection in every single way. There was not one way which he fell short of what God's perfection, God's moral standard is. Were you there when he made that perfection? Was I there? Was you there when he made this perfection? Were you there when Julius Caesar conquered the earth? But how do you know? So how do you know that happened? Know. How do you know that Julius you're Caesar just, conquered the earth? You're just making do you believe in history books? Do you read history books or do you reject history Who books? these history books? Well, what about the history books that you get all your information and you base your knowledge on from? Well, some history is based on facts. Some history is based on facts. You can't go back 3,000 years ago. I can because, ago. number one, I can no, give many, I can, yeah, I can give countless Who arguments to shoot. Jesus walk the earth? Prove to me. Yeah, we have many you sources can't. outside of the Bible. Yeah, we, no, thousands of eyewitnesses. Thousands of eyewitnesses, of credible eyewitnesses, prophecies. Eyewitnesses, come on, guys, please. So do you, do you not believe in anything that you've read about in history? I believe God, but I don't no. believe that you think that God walked the earth and made all these up. All these rules. They don't, they don't exist, come on. How do you believe, do you believe in any historical thing that you've read? Any event in history, any personal figure in history that you've read about, do you reject them all? Or do you only reject the one that doesn't make sense in your mind? Okay, but do you know God walked, you know Jesus walked the earth? I do know. You know how? I, because of the thousands of eyewitnesses, because of the prophecies that were written before he came into the world, that he would come, written, dated before Christ was born. Alright, alright. So, let's say that did. Do you think the Ten Commandments are based on Jesus or man? The Ten Commandments are from God. They're God's standard. They're given to Moses from God. No, man didn't just make these up. Ah, it's, it's common fact. Yeah, right? No, I hear you. No, but so, don't so you the, think? Yeah, the commandments come from God. It's common sense. Here. Not steal. Not have adultery. Not kill. But, but every, That's just common sense. But there's a lot of things that people say is subjective, right? Okay, so, but so if people don't believe in God, so they believe in subjective morality. No, I understand mm -hmm. exactly. What but standards? That's just, that's standard standard that, 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 yeah. Yeah. You just don't steal. You don't kill. You don't have Listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, let me tell you. So you you believe there's a moral standard? That there's a standard of right and wrong, and who yeah. determines that standard? Is it you? I believe right and wrong. I do. Okay. I do. How do you get that right and wrong? What makes I up think, right and wrong? I think I think it's based on common sense. You don't based need on the common Bible sense. to tell what right and wrong is. You want to determine? Right? You want to determine what's right and wrong? 
Yeah, I know murdering someone's wrong. I okay. Exactly. What about what about what about lusting after a woman in your own heart? Have you done that? Yeah, You've lusted. That's wrong. That's sin. Okay. Says the Bible. So why are you doing things that's wrong? You want to know why the Bible is meant here to tell us what's right and wrong, but not just to tell us what's right and wrong, because God can show us what's right and wrong, and all we are is condemned. All we see ourselves help us. The Bible points to Jesus to save you from your sin. The Bible points us to Jesus Christ to save us from our sinful nature. We're not here just to tell you what you're doing is wrong. We're here to tell you that Jesus Christ can save you from that. Jesus can save you from your lustful thoughts. Jesus can save you from your breaking what is right and wrong. You may know what is right and wrong, and I'm sure that you do what you know is wrong. I'm sure that many times both of you have done things that are wrong in your life and you've known them wrong. There it is. You are guilty. You've confessed yourself as guilty. You can't even live up to the standard. Hey, you know Judgment Day? You can't live up to the standard. You can't live up to your own standard. You, we have a standard we can't even live up to. What good does that do? I'm just saying, like, you guys are talking about Christianity and trying to convert people and stuff. Everyone here is just trying to live their life. You guys yelling at them for two hours here is not going to do anything except rile people up and get people upset. You're not doing anything good here. You think you're making some big point. Everyone here is just having a good time, trying to live their own life. Just live and let live, man. That's what God would let do. Live and let live. Let and love love. Okay, so we should just let everyone do whatever they want to do according to you. Yeah, if it's legal. Okay, so if if, if 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 some people claim to us today, let's just say some people claim to us today that being with a with a five year old woman is okay. For a forty year old man it's okay. What if there's a law that says it's legal? Is it okay for you then? What's your standard of right and wrong, friend? You wanna live how you wanna live is everyone wants to live how they wanna live? Thank God, thank God that people choose not to do what they wanna do. Men like Hitler did what he wanted to do. He had this desire in his country allowed it and guess what so according to him according to this man if it's legal and you want to do it then it's okay to do it it's that's not true we need a standard of what is right and wrong and even the standard that we make in ourselves is it wrong to lie is it wrong to steal they, they don't they don't want to they don't want to have how many people really want to have a conversation you know how many people have been here wanting to have a they all they do is personally walk away public conversation here okay you want to have Okay, okay, let me, okay, I understand. We'll have a conversation. It's true. It's... I think you're using a microphone too much loud. Okay, okay. We, we, we have a standard of what's right and wrong in ourselves. We can't even live up to the standard of what is right and wrong in ourselves. We know that lying is wrong. We know that stealing is wrong. How many of us can confess that we have lied and stealed? We have a standard inside of us. We have. Thank you for being honest. Yeah, I'm honest. I have too. We can't even live up to the standard that God has put in us. The Bible says that that, that conscience that you have, determining what is right and wrong, is given by God. And we can't even live up to that standard. How much less will we live up to God's perfect standard of, 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 of what is right and wrong? God bless you, man. I, 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 I thank you for that, but God bless you. I respect it. I reject that. And, and how can we live up? There's a standard here that we can't live up to. That's why Jesus Christ came in the world to save us from our sins, to save us because we can't live up to that standard. If we could live up to that standard and be good in ourselves, Jesus would not have to come have died and suffer and, and, and bleed on a cross and rise again from the dead for us. What is it? The moral standard. God's moral standard. What is that? But what does that include? Perfect. Thank God God was smart enough to write it down in a book and give it to us so we could read it. Oh, we have one. If we want, you can take it. Uh, the, a copy of the Bible? It's the Word of God. The Bible. Um, okay. Like we have a... Now... I... I my moral standard is to not hurt anyone, and that includes stealing or lying or murdering or any form of emotional or physical pain. My question is how loving another hurts anyone else. Well, loving one another, true love, true love doesn't hurt. It, it always seeks the good of others. True love seeks the good of others. If I know that you two, let's just say, are participating in an act that's ultimately going to harm you. Okay, no, I'm just going to say, it, ultimately going to harm you. Like a mother or a father would warn its child not to play with fire. It's going to hurt them. 
It's loving for the father and the mother to stop the child, although the child may not understand and say, but it's fun, but I'm going to be okay. There's no hurt in it. Look, it's fun. The father is wiser and knows that the, at the end, it's not going to turn out well. It's not going to be okay. It's going to cause hurt. People have to make mistakes sometimes. We have to learn from them. You okay. guys said yourselves, you made mistakes, we've learned from them. That's the important part. Okay. And so I think, like, by God's definition, we so are perfect because we made mistakes, we admitted to those mistakes, and we moved on, and we became better people because of them. I also have another question. Okay. Many of people in straight relationships, will love someone and it won't end up either in divorce or separating uh, on equally good terms. Is there a difference there? Okay. Yeah, so we hear a lot of stuff all the time, couples saying, I love you with all my life, I'm going to be with you other. A year later, they're cheating on each other, they're cursing each other, they're abusing each other. So we know that there's a real difference between saying, I love you, I love you, and actually showing love. And actually showing love. Of course there is. But what about in a scenario like my parents have divorced, but they are very friendly with each other, they're on good terms, they accept that they are both my parents and they both love me completely, even in each other in a platonic love. Well, well, I'm, th I'm thankful that it hasn't been an ugly divorce like some families, because some families get very bad. It's true. But again, what is your standard of, of right and wrong? What is your standard of what is good and wrong? If we look to the Bible, I can show you what the Bible says about divorce. My opinion doesn't matter. I know that my judgment doesn't matter. I can show you what the Bible says about divorce, and I can let the Bible speak for itself. You asked what my what I thought was right or wrong. My right or wrong is if someone is hurt in the process. And of course, even if it's, I obviously never, I am 15, I haven't done anything with anyone. <laughs> Were you hurt during the process of your parents' divorce? No, I was one years old. Not, not, not hurt, not hurt at all. In fact, if they were together now, it would be weirder if they were apart. And do you think that diver divorce can hurt children? Uh, totally. I think it can totally hurt children. I also think if the parents aren't made for each other and being around each other can hurt the children sometimes more than help them. So you're so okay. So divorce, if it hurts a child, is wrong according to your moral standard, because you said whatever hurts someone is wrong. Divorce yes. hurts children. Yes. It, it's true. If in a scenario it hurts a child, I can see it being wrong. Okay, so there is a there is a sense of right and wrong. What I'm here to tell people is that our sense of right and wrong, number one, we don't live up to it. Every person here has a sense of what is right and wrong, I hope. If not, that's a scary place if you're conscious here. We have a standard of what is right and wrong inside ourselves. And everyone, if they're honest, in one point in their life has broken that standard, has crossed that line, has done something that their conscience has told them not to do. So what is the penalty for those who know what is wrong and do it anyways? For those who are know what is right and yet they don't do it. That's what we're here. We're here to say that there's a consequence for that and we're here to say that Jesus Christ came to this world to save you for what you've done and what you can do he's come to save us I completely agree but how is being gay lesbian or trans or any of the rest of it wrong I can show you what the Bible says I can show you what the Bible says show the Bible why can't you just say I can show you where, 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 what the Bible says about practices. Okay. I don't want to misquote it. That way, you guys are all here. You see it. Uh, about my whole second, since you are actually passing for a second, my help just hasn't finished yet. So we know that, right? All right. You, I, I can, I can read. I can read the scriptures where it says that yes, it is wrong. Okay, it's first. It's First Corinthians chapter six. Okay. First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Yes. That's it. Those who do wrong. No, no, no. Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin, or who worship idols, or commit adultery or are male, male prostitutes, or practice homosexuality, or are thieves, or are greedy people, or drunkards, or abusive, or cheat people, none of these will in inherit the kingdom of God. That's this list of sins that will stop people from entering into the kingdom of heaven. These are the sins. We don't make up what is right and wrong. I'm not here giving you my opinion. I'm preaching the word of God. And, and, and although you may not understand it, Trust in God. He's wiser. Amen. I do feel there's a difference there, seeing as everything in that... If Jesus died for your sins and you don't say he died for nothing. Everything there was something that would result in 
someone being hurt or their life being ruined or something that would actually put someone in a horrible position in life. The only thing on there, homosexuality, is the only thing in there that wouldn't have an effect on other people. It has an effect on God. Commandments, God. commandments are God. given God. for God and for man. There's two, there's two types of commandments, commands in respect to God and commands in respect to man. The Ten Commandments, the first four commandments we read, there shall have no other God before me. Why would, why would worshipping and praying to an idol hurt another person? Praying to, a sta praying to a statue would not hurt another person. It hurts God. Honor the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. What does that have to do with your neighbor? It has nothing to do. It has to do with God. There are sins that are committed against your ma against man, right? Stealing, killing, and there are sins committed against God. This sin defiles and destroys God's original creation nature. And he created man for a female. Nature, genetics show you a man and a man can't have a baby. God created marriage for, for a purpose of, of producing life. This hurts God's order. I must say, uh, the only thing about that is, for most of these things, if you ask someone why thieving is wrong or murder is wrong, they can come up with so many scenarios, and then also, it's against God. The only thing, with homosexuality, your only result, the only thing bad about that that you're saying is it's against God. There's no, nothing for anyone to learn from that, but of course, if it were against God, uh, you also say God loves all, and obviously there's the whole, you have to let go of your sins for to end up in heaven. Turn away, turn away, turn, turn to away Jesus. from it, of turn course. Jesus, yeah. um, but turn. I have to ask if there was a pedophile and they did so, but then they, you know, they um, turned away from it, would they go to heaven? So if a pedophile turned away from their sin, okay, let's go back to what you first said. So, so you said that other part that homosexuality it, it defies God's order and creation, that He made a man for a woman, okay. And that through this unity that God created in the beginning, since the beginning of order, they were to bring forth life. They were to multiply and bring forth life. That's something that, that this type of relationship cannot do. It cannot do. Well, now it can. It cannot. It's impossible. Actually, I have a cousin who was married to a woman and they had a baby that they had on their own through a surrogate. So through a surrogate. Okay, so that's that's getting another party who who is compatible with that. Again, it, it's well, needed. She's the one who okay, so had the baby, but yes. I can, now if you really want to yes. know what's right and, and wrong. That is obviously biologically needed. That's but the This so is you, about being with someone you love and being happy with like a woman. So there is no marriage. According to the Bible, I can read to you what the Bible says. According to the Bible, Jesus said that there is no marriage that's not male and female. There's no other marriage recognized before God. According to the Bible, that's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said. This is what the words of Jesus said. Okay, so, so I understand that you have questions and maybe it doesn't make sense. The first four commandments are all towards God and they don't really affect men. You shall not worship any other God before me. You shall honor the Sabbath. That has nothing to do, if we break those commands, it has nothing to do with hurting him or him. Yet they are commands by God. They are the most important commands. The most important commands are the commands towards God. The very first commandment is to love your, the most important, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and might. This is the greatest whole. It has nothing to do with man. It has something to do with God. Exactly. Second is to love your neighbor as yourself. Second. So there's commands towards God, that's commands to man. And not only that, I, I will test, I, I'm not going to get into the science of, 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 of also the, the physical problems that that type of sex also uh, uh, people get when they're committing that type of acts. Very more probable with that, but I'm not going to get into that. Why it's harmful in the body and soul. And it leads people away from God. Look how many people have crossed by here and cursed God and cursed Jesus. What have we said wrong? We're, we're proclaiming a review. This community brings people away farther from God. People here are not acceptance of God. So, according you just mentioned, uh, all abusive is abusive is wrong, right? The the way you are talking to us, I feel like it's a totally abusive. Will anyone agree with that? The way you are talking is a kind of abusive to any people here. The attitude. Would you guys agree? Like like his attitude is kind of abusive. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, okay. so, so what about the people who are pushing us, spitting on us, cursing in the face? Will you say that to them too? Yeah. Well, Is your standard both ways or no? Yes. Because that's what I want to ask. I'm not pushing anyone. If people want to walk by, we're not forcing them to hear. We're here preaching the word of God, which we have the right in Canada to do. We're preaching the Bible. When did I give my opinion? Let me answer the question. Let me answer the question. The consent. 
You're I do. I, I want them. I'm trespassing all the I, 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 I want them. So, so, so you now you're saying because these people My you think you think we are kind of abusing you. That's why you're trying to be abusive, abusive to okay. us, right? Okay. I don't think in Bible that okay. just because other guys doing bad things to you, you can also reply with bad things, right? So do you think you're doing the right thing? Question. Uh, no, we're not abusing you. We're here exercising our free right. You have every right to move along. You choose to come here and stand with us. We're here at Young and Dundas preaching like we are every single day, 365 days a year. We're here preaching the gospel. We were here before this pride came on day. We were here yesterday, the day before. We're here preaching the gospel of Jesus. If, if, if you want to come and listen, then, then listen. We're here to have a conversation. You want to have a conversation? Hey, listen, I had conversations here. You know how many times people came to me and just said their point and left off and just left and said out and then started cursing? If you want to have a conversation, I'll have a conversation with you. People are angry. People are angry. People are angry. I know. They're angry. And sexually assaulted because of you guys. Because of us. So we're the cause of them getting raped, is what you just said. We're, you just said because of us, we're the cause of people being sexually assaulted. That's what you just said. I literally did not say that. You said because of you. You said because of you. You said because of us. We're here to promote a lifestyle that is holy and healthy and that will give peace and satisfaction because we've experienced it and because it's true. We've known Jesus Christ as Savior. He saved us and we're here to promote that life that, listen, there is a life that is healthy, pure, and holy. You're not doomed for one way. If you're born this way, you're not doomed to live that life as you are. There is change in Jesus Christ. There is change through Christ. Okay, so this gets a little sentimental for me, but my father was shot and killed for being gay in California, and he was also religious, he was Christian, and just, I know that God forgave his sins, and when I go to heaven to see him, he will be there. And he was accepted, and just because, like, it's like reality, reality will always be changing. The world will always be changing. Gay, lesbians, anybody will one day be accepted into heaven. Okay, so I'm sorry about your loss of your father. That's sad. That's not condoned. The Bible says, thou shalt not murder. Very true. It says, thou shalt not murder. And it's, it's sad what happened, and we're in a world... Can I finish? Okay, but people are listening to you. Okay. I'm going to bring fucking guns to this place. No. There's what? There's many threats, actually, to this place. No, not by us. We're here to preach the no, truth. No, we're going to fucking listen to you. I, I'm against that. Now, now it's true. Now, it, the, there are issues that are difficult in the Bible, but we will look. We will look at, to what God says of, of what is right and what is wrong. We will look to what God says about being a Christian. Jesus Christ said, if you want to be my disciple if you want to follow me you must must is not an option must is a requirement you must deny yourselves what does it mean people to deny yourselves you say you're born this way accept who you are jesus says deny jesus said deny that you may find life he said he that loves his life shall lose it he said he, he that hates his life in this world will find it and much more after that Jesus Christ is here to proclaim a message of life. He said in John 10, he said, I come, I come to this world that they may have life. Who is the, that they, all of you, Jesus is talking about all of you, that you may have life, that you may find what your meaning in life is through him. Listen, Jesus was speaking to people who were spiritually dead. He was talking to people who were spiritually dead. What does that mean? It means they're physically alive, they're walking, but they have no life with God. They're empty inside. It's darkness inside. But Jesus came to raise them from the dead spiritually and give them life. Give them life. Yes, there is, there is life for you people. There is freedom from your ways.